communication, I think, is the, is the key to working with our children. And respect. That a child is visually impaired for life, not just for a few hours a day. So the approach for the whole of their day has to be, has to take account of that vision impairment. And that is what this school offers. We're gonna to have to look harder. There we go. We've got the physios, we've got the speech, we've got the nurses. I always think we're a giant jigsaw and we've all got a part to play. We're all a piece of a jigsaw. When it all clicks together, it's for the, the better, the good of the child. When I first walked onto the premises, I just felt a great vibe about the place. You, you just get a feeling when you know something's right. Some of our children come here from the age of three. I've been here now 11 years. You get to know these children and you see them growing up and then they leave at 19 and you become part of their family as well. They have lots of equipment here and they use it daily. In other schools they probably wouldn't be able to stand. There'd be no staff to stand them in the standing frames or put them on side liners and wedges. Every day that's what these children are getting. The day we came, we were met by Claire Garrity, the deputy head, and she was just so warm and she sat and talked to us and then she took us round and we went into every class. Just for everything was explained to us, we met the children, the rest of the staff, and so that instantly made us feel that yes, we felt this was the right place for Jack. My name's Joel Byrne and it's my great privilege to be the headmaster of the Royal School for the Blind here in Liverpool. The school has been in existence for 222 years. As a charity, we looked and saw that there was a need for a different group of young people. And now we have become a centre of excellence for those children who have multiple disabilities and a visual impairment and blindness. That centre of excellence has been confirmed by our most recent three Ofsted inspections, where the inspectors judged us to be outstanding on all three occasions. They've got so many things wrong with them that it's easy to think, oh well the visual impairment is just a little thing, but it's a massive learning disability. The children can't get any immediate information by just looking around a room, they don't know who's talking to them, everything takes so long for them to process. The fear that these children have when they can't move, they can't talk, and in addition they can't see. We have to get through all those barriers before they can begin to open up to what life has to offer for them. One of my biggest strengths is I like to be positive about everything in, in life. You know, I'm always looking for what the children can do and not what they can't do. We build on what the children, the child can do. The instrument called, it's a... Child child Communication is paramount for a child to progress in their learning. We work together in a multidisciplinary way with a whole host of therapists that we have here on site. One aspect of therapy may overlap into another aspect of therapy. Everyone begins to work to the same end. Some of our children with the more complex needs may need to have two or three physiotherapists with them in the hydrotherapy pool. And it may well be then that our speech therapist and the occupational therapist will go in there for that session because it might be that that's the time when more language is used because the child's relaxed and excited. We mix in class all the time, don't we? And we always spend a lot of time within classes and you know we get to know the class teachers. So we're actually part of the school. We're not just a therapy or a physio department on our own, as in some places are. Everyone is part of the school and we're all classed as part of the school. Our speech therapist is based here. She also takes account of the child's vision impairment. Roundabout or swing? Roundabout. Uh, Roundabout? Round yeah, good boy, good choice. I'm counting. Can you count with me? One. Alexander's got um, cerebral palsy. He's got cortical visual impairment. He has microcephaly. When Jack first started, his epilepsy was uncontrolled. He has complex needs, epilepsy, severe learning disability. From, from a medical point of view, I obviously had concerns about him coming to school. It's, it's lovely that there's two nurses always on site here and they're excellent and I very soon 
realised that I could trust them. School has identified that, that he does have a line of sight in his upper left cortex and they'll constantly use that to enhance his learning. They've introduced him to sign language, you know, on-body sign and different things. On-body signing is a very relaxed way of helping a child to know what's going to happen next. Say if some of our children are profoundly disabled, I might say, OK, Amy, it's time for a bath or a shower. We're going to get a shower. So it just gives them that little feeling of something hitting them on the head, really. Physiotherapists will take the children in for hydrotherapy sessions to allow their limbs and muscles to become less hypertonic and able to manipulate the switches, etc., that we use in our computer and ICT curriculum. In the pool environment, we're able to do things that some of the children actually can't, can't experience on land. And I think certainly being in the pool from a respiratory point of view, from a movement point of view, from, from a weight-bearing point of view, we're giving children plenty of opportunities to do that if, if they can't on land, which, which some of the children that we see here can't. In a pool they're freer and also the fact that they can gain skills and learn how to swim does give the kids a lot of confidence. The school sees the great importance of highly qualified staff and the need for quite a number of them too. Each class group is approximately five young people. They have a qualified teacher and all of our teachers have to take an additional degree to become a qualified teacher of the visually impaired. Staff training, um, which goes on every Friday in school, is massive for our, for our staff to follow through to the children. We should always tell the children who we are before we wheel them off, where we're taking them and what's going to happen. I can't sort of praise the staff highly enough really. He absolutely loves the school. Beth's not the only child in the, in the school who, who has uh, cerebral palsy. There are other children with special needs. We chose this school because it's basically the best. We noticed a difference within a couple of months actually. She seemed to be more, more confident in everything. When she's not at school, she isn't as happy. Our environment is exactly designed to meet the needs of our young people. The corridors, the objects of reference, everywhere around the school, they have clues to help them to learn their routes. And in many cases, you know, a 150 yard walk from their class area up to the dining room, for example, may be the longest independent journey that some of our youngsters take. You know, the whole school has been adapted now for the multiply disabled visually impaired so we have a very nice environment to work in and I think that makes it much easier for us to get on with the job and enjoy it. We are a residential school as well as a day school. We offer a 24-hour curriculum in effect. That sounds very formal but it's done in a very relaxed way. The children come from all over the country. We have children from as far east as Hull, as far west as Anglesey, as far north, currently, as Northern Cumbria, and as far south as Cambridge. Likewise, on the residential side, Ofsted have found that our care and provision is outstanding. You give a lot of care, love, attention at all times. For Alexander, it's like being at a home from home. He's with his peers. I don't think he'd want it any other way, to be honest. Part of our job is to give the children a home life, a nice warm home life. Each child has got a key worker and that key worker goes with them right through the residential life. Some of our children are here one night, two nights, three, four. Giving them a home life and getting them out into the community as well and, and as much as we can bring the community in. They've got a fantastic social life. We go to the theatre two or three times a year. We've just been to see A Night of Queen and that was fantastic. We've been to see Greece. We've, we're just booking tickets now to go and see The Lion King. We go with the circus, we go bowling. We, go with the, we have a disco twice a week. It's, it's actually a nightclub set up for people with learning disabilities. So, I mean, we got outstanding for the first time in our Ofsted inspection this year. I remember the Ofsted inspector before that said she'd have, she had a disabled child of her own. She'd have no qualms about putting her child in our school and that to me was probably the biggest compliment we could, 
we could get. And the, the parents, it's not an easy decision they've made. We've got to let them realise that their child is happy and safe. And more than anything, in school and residence, to me that's the most important thing, is our work with the parents. And we've got staff who've been here long term for years. They stay here. I said, oh, I'm going to come for two years and I get some experience. And I wouldn't work anywhere else now. I'll retire from here. <laughs> the warmth from the staff, school and residential, is it's apparent, you can feel it in the school. And when other professionals visit our school, it's the, the, when they go to walk back out through the door, they say, what a lovely school. You can feel the warmth. Bill holistic approach has helped Alexander greatly. His communication levels have improved. It's like the whole school's always aware of the needs of every child, and they help each child for their individual needs. A wide communication approach that we don't just use language, we use objects of reference, we use on body signs, we use gesture, we use whatever's appropriate and we gradually unlock the child's world for them and help them make sense of it. Thank you.